What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Any comic book enthusiast or manga aficionado can tell you where exactly the story was that their favorite character became their favorite character. For me, back in the days with Marvel, it, it was our Iron Man. Iron Man was my first favorite character, and I can specifically say that issue 200 of his original series, when he donned the Silver Centurion outfit, that's when I started gravitating towards Iron Man. I'm like, this guy is different. Uh, he's flawed. <laughs> and uh, back then, he was fighting alcoholism. I think they're bringing that back to the storyline. Yeah, he was, a, he was a flawed military millionaire who built this armor, suit of armor, to protect himself and protect the people around him. Now for DC, my favorite character was The Flash, specifically Wally West. Uh, this was after the first Infinite Crisis, I should say, not Infinite War. That's War is Marvel, Crisis is DC. It was the first Infinite Crisis when the original, well the second, I should say, Flash died in the crisis saving the whole multiverse and that was Barry Allen. And then Wally West was his protege, he stepped up to to the mantle of the Flash, and from there, Mark Wade took the character beyond being just a sidekick. Along with the end of the uh, Infinite Crisis on Earth, on multiple Earths, was it? Infinite Crisis on multiple Earths, there was a new character that was debuted in the 80s, written and drawn by a creator named Dan Jurgen, and that was Booster Gold. And so, I followed Booster Gold for a long time. I even still have the very first issue of Booster Gold. The second, third issue, fourth issue, all the way to the eighth issue. But Booster Gold ended up joining the Justice League, actually specifically Justice League International, with Guy Gardner as the Green Lantern, uh, Martian Manhunter, Fire Ice, Booster Gold, and also Blue Beetle, and also Batman. Batman was there too, but he wasn't there for too long. And then Captain Adam. And throughout his career with the JLI, Booster Gold started teaming up with one of his cohorts, which was the Blue Beetle, Ted Kord, the second Blue Beetle. Because of their camaraderie and the way that Booster Gold is in the game to become famous and become rich. He is from the future, so he came back to the past with all this armament so he could use his knowledge to trade it, trade in stocks and all that and he wanted to become famous. Ted Kord is a genius level inventor, no superpowers. Actually, they both don't have superpowers, but uh, Ted Kord is just a genius, so he creates all these type of weapons and vehicles to help him in his crime stopping. So anyway, they're known appropriately as blue and gold. And now McFarlane Toys, Todd McFarlane Toys, has created a two pack that we're gonna look at today. This is DC's multiverse Blue Beetle and Booster Gold Blue and Gold set. <laughs> so we're gonna open that up today and see what it's like. I haven't collected and I haven't collected action figures in a long time. I've sold quite a bit of them from the collections that I've had, but let's compare and see what we've got. Okay, here we go. Not right off the box. This is what the box looks like. Let's just start with that. <laughs> You've got Ted Cord on this side of the packaging. Does come with a weapon, and um, here's Booster Gold. Also comes with a weapon, and how appropriate, he comes with a, a phone. And then there is Booster Gold's um, robot butler-ish, something like that. It's Geet. I like, I like the way the background looks right there. So on the top, you've just got plastic <laughs> on the side, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. There's the back. <laughs> this is this is pretty much how they are depicted in the comics. Uh, always running away from trouble uh, or getting into trouble as well. So uh, without further ado, I don't think there's, yeah, bomb, there's legal stuff. Let's just go ahead and uh, open it up and see what we've got, okay? So let's just look at the back of the package. It does come with two stands here, a trading card for <laughs> Blue Beetle and Booster Gold, and it actually comes with a stand. That's actually a nice looking stand, look at that. Uh, very techy. Is that a word? Just, it's techy. There are the figures. Let's take those out as well. Ouch. Okay, I'm bleeding. <laughs> Yay. What happens when you use short things? 
And we're back. Sorry, I had to take a little time off. I ended up nicking my thumb right there with this nice sharp tool that I like to use to open up my boxes, if you will. So kids, don't play with sharp things. There's the stand right here. And we've got Mr. Booster Gold. Guess I should straighten everybody out before I start filming, huh? Okay, so here we go. The figures are out of their packaging. We've got Blue Beetle right there and Booster Gold. Now, just looking at these right out of the package, I'm a little perturbed that McFarlane didn't give us plastic lenses right here so you could see their eyes. It doesn't show Michael Carter, which is Booster Gold, as... Okay, Blue Beetle wants to take a rest. Um, it doesn't show that you know, booster, you can see his eyes and what have you, but you can usually in the comic. So let's go with articulation with this guy. So heads on a swivel, ball joint it looks like. Got some butterfly joints right here, so it goes all the way to the back, all the way to the front, and arms go up 360. It's got bicep rotation right there. Double jointed elbows, so his arms go all the way up to there. And back down, and wrist swivel. He's got a waist swivel right there and upper torso turns gotta kind of position it because this right here this pointy thing can move because he does have waist, waist rotation so look if you go like that he, uh one thing about mcfarland toys that i have heard is they call this right here the diaper and it kind of does look like a diaper look at that and i guess that all his figures are look like this they just add this piece and sometimes it works that it masks masks the uh, the diaper look as this one does because booster's blue portion goes down into this area into the pelvic area so it doesn't look like a diaper too much okay four legs go out all the way go back go forward in your face double knees it looks like this goes all the way up to the back he doesn't have any rotation there at the shin which is actually good because that'd be strange <laughs> you've got ankle rotation goes up goes back and also toe articulation he's got an open left hand there so i'm assuming this is where his cell phone goes as if he's looking at his cell when does it go? Well, he does have a cell phone and it goes like this. Take a picture, take a picture. And also he has this wrist blast, which it doesn't show you on these covers right here. Thinking it just goes here. And usually the, you see these uh, yellow portions right there on the top of his wrist. That's usually where the firing mechanism is. For action figure's sake, we'll just do that. He's just blasting for no good reason. His buddy Skeets, there is his buddy Skeets. Skeets just kind of flies around him and gives him advice and sarcastic remarks and, and whatnot. But he is on a stand. There is a little hole for the peg. So he's just going to forever sit there. And it looks like he does have unpainted eyes, which is okay. But he, uh, Skeets also has the same type of firepower that Booster does. So if this is blue, then he would be firing out blue things. But if you can see here, Skeets actually shoots red. So that is Booster sans his cell phone. Yes, yes we just won't use a cell phone. All right, now let's look at Mr. Blue Beetle. Ted Cord, the second iteration of Blue Beetle. The first one was a character named Diane Garrett, and he was more of the Golden Age. Blue Beetle is more of the, well, he's not even Silver Age, he's more of the Bronze Age, which is like the late 70s to late 80s. And he took the mantle of Blue Beetle after Dan Garrett ended up dying in one of one of his battles against one of his villains so you've got what looks like a beetle on his torso there it goes to the bat I'm, I'm liking that they actually just went all the way through it's kind of a little off right here with this cut because I made this all dark blue where the costume would be more like that see how you can see we're gonna see how you can see <laughs> this is the linear way of going. And you could probably manipulate the figure to do that. He'd be like forever like this. But he's got a nice painted belt right there. One thing I did notice, now with Blue Beetle, it doesn't matter because he actually has this little cuff right here that is painted black, which is appropriate for the costume. But they kind of cheated on here with Booster and they use the same cuffs right, right there, but they just painted over it. 
So this is not really Booster Gold-ish. <laughs> Booster Gold-ish. Okay, let's look at articulation head. It was 360 and arms go out, go in all the way around. You got bicep swivel there. Double jointed elbows, wrist rotation. Same as Booster Gold, he does have the upper torso rotation there. There is no paint app to worry about. You can move it all the way around like that and it still looks like part of the costume. It does have waist rotation. Same with Booster Gold with the eyes. They could have made these clear and just had eyes underneath it. Okay, legs go, bat go out in the front. There you go. Where's my sole of my foot? Double knee articulation, ankle rock, and also toe articulation. Man, that would be weird. And there you have Mr. Blue Beetle. He does come with a gun. From what I understand, I think it's Warner Brothers. I have stated that they do not want any guns being released with their with their action figures. So the way McFarlane cheated on this is he's kind of making it look like a grappling gun so you got that and then there's a little beetle at the top at the end there so he kind of did cheat this is a gun but he just made it a grappling hook with a beetle at the end pew 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 okay he's got a beetle coming out of his gun not bad for a seven inch figure mcfarland does their fig their figures in seven inch form where if you had something like the marvel legends line he's just gonna forever be on his back with Marvel Legends lines, they're, they're more six inch, except for, you know, the bigger characters and stuff. Okay, I'm back. So I had to put Beetle on a stand that it came with. Booster's a little taller than Beetle, but that's probably just the way their knees are situated. But I do have one Marvel figure. This is Iron Man, and this is the Marvel Legends Iron Man, the newest depiction of Iron Man. They are just a little bit taller. So if you're trying to make a DC slash Marvel setup, the DC figures are going to be larger. Overall, what are my thoughts of these two characters? Well, besides their derpy faces, I mean, look at look at Blue Beetles just kind of smirking. This guy is like kind of sneer like me type of thing. That does kind of portray their their normal characteristics and what have you but i wish there might have been a different straightaway profile or even even a couple of head swaps i wish there were more hands because i don't typically like one, my characters having one open and one closed it just means that you know whatever whatever accessories they have are dedicated to that particular joint like that it's nice these figures are nice i know there's other figures that show booster gold and blue beetle in a better light and actually even show a booster with more of a gold painting rather than this yellow overall i'm happy with this this is a nice set at any rate that's my end of my rambling I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and click that like button, click subscribe, click on the notification bell, let you know I came out with another video for y'all. See you guys next time. Peace.